In preparation for Passion Week, we are looking at the supporting cast involved in the drama behind the cross. In any great drama, you have people who might not be on center stage, but they are essential for the overall drama to take place, for the story to be told. And through this series, we're looking at a few members of the supporting cast around behind the drama of the cross. Two weeks ago, Jordan introduced to you Mary of Bethany who anointed Jesus for burial. And last week, uh, you looked at Judas of Iscariot, the great betrayer. Now this morning, we're going to look at Barbaeus, a story of an accused murderer who is released, excuse me, Barabbas, A story of an accused murderer who was released because of an innocent man took his place, his punishment. The story of Barabbas is recorded in all four Gospels. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But I've chosen Luke's Gospel for today's reading of Scripture. So hear now the Word of God, Luke chapter 23, verses 1 through 25. Thanks be to God for His holy and inspired Word. Amen? Amen. Uh, There's nothing wrong with your eyes, all right? The projector uh, decided to um, go frizzy this morning, so nothing we can do about it. But I'm sure you've all been to worship services where there wasn't a projector, so anyway, it's no big deal, right? Right? All right, thank you for that. The name Barabbas appears nowhere else in the New Testament except in these accounts where Jesus is on trial before Pilate. The Bible does not give us any information about his childhood. It doesn't give us any information about what happened to Barabbas after this episode of Scripture. But we do know that his name means son of the father or son of the teacher, indicating perhaps that his father was a Jewish rabbi. Now, even though this name was very popular for sons of Jewish rabbis, some have suggested that Barabbas might have been a son of a famous rabbi. Now, all this kind of makes sense because the gospel narrative clearly identifies Barabbas as a religious radical who was notorious for his belief in the sacred state of Israel and for his contempt for the Roman occupation of Israel and Jerusalem. John's Gospel identifies Barabbas as a thief, but this is not the word that's used for a common everyday thief. You see, Barabbas was an insurgent. He was a rebel. He was a a revolutionary who had committed acts of terrorism against the Roman government to cause chaos and confusion. And this, this, same, this word thief is the same word that is used to describe the two men that hung on the cross on either side of Jesus at their crucifixion because they were probably along with Barabbas in these acts of insurrection against Rome. You need to understand that common everyday thieves were not crucified. The death penalty wasn't for common everyday thieves. You you just throw a a, a common everyday thief in the jail. But crucifixion was for insurrectionists. Now Mark and Luke's gospel tell us that Barabbas was an was an insurrectionist who was involved in the Jewish efforts to throw off the Roman government and that he had actually committed murder in the time of the insurrection. Now historians tell us that there were, during this time, there were many riots against Rome in Jerusalem and in Judea. And not only against Rome, but riots against the local Roman governor, Pilate. And Barabbas may have been a murderer, even a leader 
a member and even a leader of the party of the Zealots. The Zealots party was a movement that was, was to incite the people to, re, to rebel against the Roman Empire and to expel Rome out of the region and to use force if necessary. So it's reasonable to assume that Barabbas was a leader behind these revolts and he was viewed by the people as a local hero, a kind of religious Robin Hood, if you would. Barabbas' radical views, well, it must have justified him to commit murder during these riots against Rome. And that is what led him into prison, waiting crucifixion. Now, Matthew identifies Barabbas as a notorious prisoner. <laughs> and that's really a, a perfect two-word description of this guy. You see, it is reasonable to conclude that Barabbas was a son of a, of a Jewish rabbi who had developed radical religious views about the nation of Israel, who had joined the party of the Zealots and rose to the top of that terrorist organization and led revolts, riots against Rome. Barabbas was a hometown hero who had murderous blood on his hands, and he was eventually captured, imprisoned, and sitting in a Roman jail cell awaiting his execution by crucifixion. Now, we don't have any evidence to show that Jesus and Barabbas had ever met before, but all that is going to change on this first Good Friday morning. The scripture reads, Now when morning came, all the chief priests and the elders and the people conferred together against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him to Pilate the governor. And they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar. Well, you can't blame him for that. But anyway, he opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar, and he claims to be a Messiah, a king. Now, remember, the night before, Jesus was arrested in the garden, and he was brought before the Sanhedrin. And during all that questioning and beating and, and uh, against Jesus, we know that they concluded that Jesus was a blasphemer. But now, blasphemy was a charge that Pilate didn't really care about. Blasphemy is a religious thing. Pilate is a Roman government of governor of Jerusalem. So these guys had to change their tactic. So they accused Jesus of being an insurgent against Rome accusing him to, uh, to subverting the nation, opposing Roman task, taxes, and claiming himself to be a king. Basically, the chief priests were accusing Jesus as being an insurrectionist against Rome, the same exact crime that Barabbas was sentenced to die for. So, as they brought Jesus to Pilate, Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? And you have said so, Jesus replies. Now, this, this one sentence and answer response that we find in Luke is expanded upon in Luke's gospel. When Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answers like this, My kingdom is not of this world, if my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. So because of this answer, Pilate concluded that Jesus was not an insurrectionist as they were claiming, but rather he was an innocent religious man. So Pilate told the chief priest, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But notice they insisted. 
He stirs up the people all over Judea by his teachings. He started in Galilee and has come all the way to here. And when Pilate hears the word Galilee, his ears pop up like an old hound dog and says, Galilee? I don't have jurisdiction over Galilee. That's Herod's job. So he sends Jesus off to Herod. And as you can see from the text, Herod was delighted to come face to face with Jesus. But the whole interview didn't go that well. He questioned Jesus. He mocked him, treated him with contempt, and concluded, though, that Jesus was innocent of the charges of insurrection, and he sent him back to Pilate. And when Jesus returned, Pilate called together the, tax, the chief uh, priest and the rulers of the people, and he says to them, You have brought this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence, and I have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing deserving death. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. And the whole crowd shouted, away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Now, oftentimes, because we know the narrative of Scripture, we hear responses like that, away with this man, release Barabbas to us, and we just like, okay, yeah, of course. But you have to stop and ask yourself the question, how could the crowd come to that conclusion to sentence Jesus to death and release Barabbas so quickly? How, how, why was that the first thing that they said? The reason is, is that the chief priest and the population 